everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, put those blessed hands together this morning. Come on, everybody standing on your feet this morning. Everybody standing this morning. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. And look at somebody across the aisles and say, it's so good to see you this morning. Just nod your head. Come on, nod your head and say, it's so good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. How many people know that the Lord is faithful? He is faithful. He is faithful. Would you join with us this morning as we lift up this great hymn of the church that says, Great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. Hallelujah. Anybody know the Lord is great this morning? Anybody know we serve a great God? Come on, does anybody know we serve a great God? Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Great is. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We serve a great God. Oh God, we come right now because you are that God. You are a great God. You are a mighty God. You are a healing God. You are a delivering God. You are a saving God. You are a providing God. You are a protecting God. You are a loving God. Oh God, we thank you this morning. Thank you, God, because you are that God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, we just come right now reverencing your name because you are that God. You are the God that woke us up this morning in our right minds. Oh, you are the God that allowed us to walk in here this morning. You are the God that gave us faculty of our limbs that we can lift our hands and praise your holy name. You are that God that restored vocal cords that we can shout hallelujah to your name. You are that God. Thank you, God. Oh, God, we just come right now. And we just ask that you continue to dwell in this place called Turner Chapel. Let your presence be made known like never before. But, oh, God, don't stop there. Send your Holy Spirit to dwell in our homes. That even when we leave this place, we will still feel your presence. But, oh, God, don't stop there. Send your Holy Spirit to dwell in our workplaces, that even the enemy can't do anything about it. But, oh, God, don't stop there. Send your Holy Spirit to dwell in our schools, that though they tried to take you out, we will send you back in with every last one of our children. But, oh, God, don't stop there. Send your Holy Spirit into the jailhouses. Send your Holy Spirit into nursing homes. Send your Holy Spirit into courtrooms. Send your Holy Spirit into boardrooms. Oh, God, don't stop there. Send your Holy Spirit, oh, God, into every household that calls on your name. Thank you, oh, God, for being that God. Lord, there are those that are in this place that are seeking a healing because we know that you are a healing God. We declare and decree right now in the name of Jesus that from the top of the head to the soles of every one of our feet, that we are healthy, whole, and healed, mind, body, soul, and spirit, that every disease and every infirmity and every sickness be canceled at the root right now in the name of Jesus. Every financial issue, oh God, that someone is going through, we declare and decree a breakthrough in our finances right now because we know that a cattle on a thousand hills belong to you. But oh God, we receive an overflow right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, there are those that are looking for financial and employment, employment gain. We know, oh God, that you are the CEO. So we declare and decree right now in the name of Jesus that there will be no underemployment or unemployment right now. And we claim promotions right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, there are those that just don't know which way to go. And Lord, we declare and decree, oh God, that you will regulate our minds right now in the name of Jesus, that we will be everything and do all that you have called us and created and anointed and appointed us to be and do in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we submit this day to you. For this isn't just a typical day. This is the day that you have made, and truly, we will rejoice and be glad in it. So as we prepare and continue to go forth in service, oh God, touch the man of God that is going to deliver the word, that even when he speaks, oh God, that we hear your voice. Touch the woman of God that is in this place that is going to lift up praises to your name, oh God, that when she sings, we hear your voice. Touch those, oh God, that are in the pulpits. Touch those, oh God, that are in the pews. Even touch those that are streaming online, oh God, that they will feel your presence like never before and begin to praise and lift up your name like never before, oh God. Even a breakthrough through the internet, oh God, we claim right now in the name of Jesus that somebody somewhere will be delivered and saved and set free, oh God. Oh God, we thank you right now. We come with the power and the authority that you have given us. Standing on your word that says that whatever we bound in heaven on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
So we bind up every sickness, every illness, every disease, every stumbling block, every obstacle, every test, every trial, and we send it back to the pits of hell from whence it came, oh God, and we lose your Holy Spirit, we lose your healing power, we lose release right now in the name of Jesus for every person that is in this place, for every person that is watching on the internet, for every person, oh God, that believes that you can do what it is that you said you would do. And through it all, we will be so sure to give you the honor. We will be so sure to give you the praise. We will be so sure to give you the glory that you are so worthy of. And it is in the most powerful, the most precious, the most mighty, and the matchless name of Jesus, who is the Christ, that everyone in this place yell amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God.
that miracle? You're waiting on that doctor's call. You're waiting on that job call. You're waiting on that financial thing to come through for you. I'm waiting on my mama to be healed. Tuesday. I watched my aunt fall out on the ground. But you do miracles so great. Yes, yes, yes. Oh God. Yes, oh God. Yes, oh God. Many times when I thought I was going to take my life, you did miracles so great. When I didn't want to be here, you did miracles so so great. Don't stop worshiping. Don't stop worshiping. I'm sure each and every one of you have a story just how great God has been to you. Just how great God has been to someone you know. Just how great God has been to someone you love. Don't stop worshiping. Because he deserves it all. We serve a great God. We serve a God that hears our faintest cry. We serve a God that hears our silent prayers. We serve a God that is in the hospital room healing right now. We serve a God who is in hospices and homes right now healing those in need. We serve a God who's reconciling marriages and relationships. We serve a God who is restoring homes. We serve a great God who is bringing our boys and girls home that have left God. We serve a great God and he deserves all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Yes, thank you, praise team. Thank you, choir. Thank you, God. Good morning. 
Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. It is so great to see each and every one of you here with us on this Sunday morning and to greet those of you who are worshiping online. If we have any visitors in the sanctuary on today, please stand. If there are any visitors worshiping us online, please identify yourselves. Thank you so very much for worshiping with us, for we know that you could have chosen any place, any space to be in. So behalf, on behalf of our pastor and his wife, Lady Bright, we welcome you on this day. Thank you where we are striving to love God love one another, love God's word, and love our neighbor by making a difference in our community. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, it is our ministry of giving. We have several different ways for you to give, which will be posted on the screen. The Ushers are walking in the aisles if you would like to give in the baskets on today. We have ways for you to also give online where you can cash out or you can text trust to give. And for those watching online, if you choose not to use any of those ways to give, you can also mail in your gift to us. Ushers are making their way through the aisles. that gave for those that desire to give. God, we pray that it may be a blessing to your kingdom, God, as we continue to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I'm going to give God some praise in this house this morning. Am I the only one who have a sense of excitement this morning because God has been good? Amen. Good morning! Somebody put your hands together and give God the best praise that you can think about this morning. Come and give God the best praise he has. God has been good to you. God made a way out for you. The fact that you view the service online, the fact that you're in church this morning, Come on, somebody. We can do better than that. We can give God. He's worthy. He is. He deserves the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Look at your neighbor and say, Lord, you, you, it's so good to have to see you this morning. Look at somebody and say, it's good. It's good to see you today. Amen. We praise God for those who've joined us online and those who made a way in church this morning. It's good to see you all. Let me recognize our supervisor this morning, Supervisor Christy Davis Jackson Esquire. Come and give God some praise for our supervisor. 
Her wealthy mom, Miss Davis, is with us. Come on, somebody bless the name, God's name for her. Now we have Regina in the back there. Yeah, there she is. That's Regina. Regina going to bless us in a while. Amen. And we praise God for that. Let us continue to take note of the announcements. Um, there's one on there about blood drive. We'll be on June 11th. We'll continue to run that announcement. We'll be on e-blast. Let us take note of it. We have this morning also worshiping with us, uh, Brother James Luttrell. But Luttrell didn't stand up. He's running for Cobb County Superior Court as a judge of the Superior Court. Come on, give God some praise for him. He came with his family, his wife. She used to be a member of the daughter. That daughter is here. It's good to see that. Brother Latroy, you may need to take out that mask so folks can see you and know who you are. Amen. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's good. We praise God for your presence. They were here what, on first Sunday of Mother's Day? Mother's Day. And uh, they said they'll come back this morning, and it's so good to have you. Is Sister Alicia in the house? Thank you so much, Brother James. Is Sister Alicia in the house? She hasn't come in yet. All right. Um... We have a, a, a treat this morning. This morning we have somebody who's worshiping with us and we praise God for her. Her name is Kendall Thomas. 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 Come on, church. We can bless the name of the Lord for Kendall. We can bless. The devil thought he had her. Death thought he had her. But she's still alive. Come on, somebody. Give God the best praise you have for Kendall. We praise God for Kevin. We praise God for Shauna. Come on, bless the name. Bless the name. God is wonderful. God, hey, somebody, hallelujah, look at those beautiful eyes, hallelujah, come on, we can bless the name of the Lord. He started something. He started something. Healing, miracle, breakthrough. God, we thank you for Kendall. He's done it again.
Kevin, y'all like to say something this morning? Hmm. Wow. Chapel. Just want to tell y'all, God is good. Through y'all prayers, cause everything. But I just want to say, just, just the power of God and the power of this church right here. All right? Like, we felt this. You know, I, I looked up in the sky one night, just, you know, in the clouds. It just looked like angels were surrounded, the, the hospital, you know, and, and then I looked down and looked back up. They still was there, you know, and, and that's just God. You know, that, that's just my experience. I you know God comes and everybody's life in a different way. But, you know, he had a reason and a purpose to keep Kendall here. You know, he didn't take us away from us. And I'm grateful. My wife is grateful. My family is grateful. You know, and my pastor, I love you, man. You know, my church, I love y'all. We love y'all. And, and thank you. Kendall is here. You know, we, we pray over her day and night. And every day is a win. You know, every day is a progress. And, you know, I'm just grateful. And I just want to say thank you for the little things. I'm going to speak for Miss Thomas. She's a little emotional. I know y'all read her post every Tuesday. Phenomenal woman, y'all. Phenomenal mother. What more can I say but thank you, God. Thank you. You know, um, I've been waiting for this day. I have been. From the moment Shauna called me and told me what happened, from the moment I walked in the ICU and I saw Kendall, I've been praying for this day. And it does not yet appear what God is doing. But for that which our eyes see today, for where he brought a little candle from, to where he has her today, we can throw our heads back and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, y'all. Let's stretch our hands to Kendall. Yes, Miss Evelyn, the rest of the family can come. Because you're our miracle story. Yes. When the enemy reminds us or tells us that it is impossible. We'll remind the enemy that with God, all things are possible. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this walking miracle. We thank you for Kendall bringing her back in church today. It's been weeks, it's been months. But today you have reminded us that you are still in the healing business. Today you have reminded us that by your stripes we can stand, we can claim our healing. So we thank you for Kendall. We thank you because the enemy wanted us to believe that it was all over. But we know when you say yes, nobody can say no. So we thank you for Kendall. Thank you, God. We thank you for the Thomas family. Thank you. thank you for how you've encouraged them and gave them strength. Yes. Now, God, we know you who have begun this good work, you will bring it to completion. Today, God, we can see her. Tomorrow, we look forward to seeing her walking in church. We look forward to seeing her dancing in church. We look forward to seeing her giving her own testimony in church. 
We believe it. We claim it. If you stand and claim it with me in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and say, glory. Open your mouth and say, hallelujah. Open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And amen. And amen. God bless you all, Team Tama. God bless you all. Look at beautiful Kenna. Lord, have mercy. I call her my girl. God bless you all. And, um, and after church, I want to make sure that we don't rush on them so they will leave right after church because we don't want everybody trying to just overwhelm them. Amen. But they feel the love. They do feel the love. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I got, I got two microphones. I couldn't even know I had two microphones. <laughs> okay. One more time. Let's give God some praise. One more time. One more time. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Shauna, and thank you, Kevin, for bringing Kendall to church this morning. Amen. Well, we know this week is our annual conference, and uh, pre-conference activities started yesterday with the young people and the lay organization. Today will be the CMDC program at 3, and then uh, tomorrow the missionary is going to be, a supervisor going to be given leadership, and uh, tomorrow evening there's a worship service, uh, the Sons of Allen. Conference starts on Tuesday. We give him leadership by our esteemed visionary bishop. He just came in. Can we give God some praise for Bishop Reginald T. Jackson? And Seth, Seth is in the house. Now, you, you know, you can't just sit when you got to give God some praise for our bishop, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise for our bishop. Amen. Bishop, it's so good to have you in church, and uh, Seth, is, I think you drove this morning, so I, 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 I hope you did. <laughs> Amen. And then, so Tuesday, the conference starts. It ends on Wednesday. Please, if you can, come to one of our worship services, especially the closing on Wednesday, if you can. Wednesday, there'll be no Bible study because we want all of us to be part of the closing at 7. Bishop... I believe we'll be preaching. And so let us come on Wednesday. If you can, if you have the time to come on Monday night, Tuesday night, or Wednesday night, if you want to see like one of those nights, I say come on Wednesday night. Amen? And you will receive a good word from the Lord. Uh, Sister Alicia Morgan, is that Cersei? She just came in. She's running for state, state school superintendent. Amen. Come on, Sister Alicia. Can you stand up? She came. She's, yeah, that's it. Take her to mass. She's running for school superintendent. Amen. She, uh, she's no stranger to turn a chapel. So it is so good to have you in church this morning. All right. Uh, I believe that covers what I need to say. If there's anything else I say when I come to preach, give God some praise for this praise team. I'm sorry, it's, it's scripture reading. Okay, yeah, come on. Good morning, Turner. Good morning, Turner. Okay, here we go. Good morning. In Staying in line with the servant leader of this house. If you are able, please stand for the reading of the word. Amen. 
The reading will be coming from Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 11, and I will be reading from the New International Version. And the word of God is as such. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out of public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guarded at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and the light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea what the angel was doing, what was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. This is the word of God for the people of God. How many believe God this morning? People ask me, isn't it crazy to believe in something new? can see and people wonder why do I still ponder over an old dream that appears will never be you see my faith is strong and anchored my faith cannot be wavered My faith makes the unknown reality. And one day if I pray, I know my dream will come to be. I believe God is incredible. Invincible, he can crumble the impossible. Yes, I believe God. Although my faith sometimes is tested on the shaky road, I try. You know that I. starts to wither I won't be driven to crumble or complain you see doubting God has never been the option to consider I've seen too many miracles hidden inside my pain oh now faith is the sign 
substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God works in mysterious ways. By faith, my miracle and my breakthrough are going to spring forth. see those hands of those who believe in God. Just believe that God can and God will. 
God will make a difference. Somebody, somebody who believes in God, know that God is moving your direction. Amen. Come and give God some praise in this house this morning. And then bless God for Sister Regina Jackson who led this praise team. Amen. God bless you. Sister Regina, God bless your praise team for blessing us again this morning. Acts chapter 12 was well read so well by Reverend Dr. Yolanda Davis. Uh, just that fifth verse, I want to emphasize, we, we're preaching from verses 1 through 11. But let me just lift that uh, fifth verse up that, uh, for our hearing this morning. So Peter was kept in prison. But the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Come on, let's read it together. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. And this morning, part three of our series, The Power of Prayer to Release, uh, part three this morning, started shifting the atmosphere through prayer. Sh shifting, somebody says shifting. Shifting the atmosphere through prayer. Let us pray. God, this morning we pray for your presence on your servant man as he comes to say, thus said the Lord. Preach through me. And speak through me. So that somebody this morning will be encouraged. Somebody this morning will be transformed. So that your word will go out with power and authority. Have your way now this morning. We thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, uh, after we got through with the worship, I mean, with the service here, the young people, it's a long day, but I realized that, uh, and I told Bishop goodbye, and I realized we had one more stop. My family and I had committed to pass by one of our friends' home, um, a place where they were celebrating graduation. And on my way to get my family, to make that stop, I decided to stop by the grocery store to purchase or buy a graduation card. Uh, so let me get it. So I go home, and then we go there and come back home. And on my way to purchase the uh, card, I turned the radio on in the car, and, and I turned to CNN. I turned to CNN, I realized that there was a breaking news yesterday. Breaking news that an 18-year-old white boy drove from one part of the state in New York to Buffalo. Went to a grocery store in a predominantly African-American city area. People just normally going in to buy something. And we went in there and opened fire. Ten people got killed. Three seriously injured. I, I couldn't believe it. Another mass shooting and killing in America. And so uh, I'm in the grocery store, I'm in the parking lot, and I'm listening to this, and I said, tell you a, reverse this guy and go home. You're not going to the grocery store today. <laughs> You're not going in this grocery store today. 
At a moment, the Spirit reminded me, and, and, and get this, we pray our prayers, continue to go out for those who are grieving, those who are crying, those who are asking why. We're praying for all of those families this morning who cannot believe what happened yesterday happened. We're we praying that God will give them comfort. We're praying that God will give them strength. We're praying that God will be with them. In fact, let us pray, God, in the name of Jesus, lift up each family in Buffalo, New York this morning that is grieving. Be with them. Comfort them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I said, Tayo, you, you're not going to that grocery store. And then the Spirit reminded me that that is exactly where the enemy wants you to be. The enemy wants you to be in a state of fear. The enemy wants you to be in a place where you don't trust that God will be with you. The enemy wants you to be on the run. And the Spirit said, you get out of this car and go in the grocery store. Just pray, Jesus, be a fence all around me. Just, just pray, Jesus, cover me with your anointing. Just, just pray that, Jesus, you be with me. Still do what you need to do and do not give the enemy the opportunity to take anything away from you. Because get this, that's what he does. He comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. That's, that's, that's what he does best. But we know what God can do. We, we understand what the Bible says, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. We understand what the Bible says about our position in God, that if God be for us, tell me who can be against us. Many times we don't understand the power of prayer because the enemy will want us to think that prayer does not work. But we've seen this morning that prayer works. We've seen this morning when God's people get down to pray, things happen. We've seen it this morning. So church, get this. We are as strong as our prayer lives. No prayer, no power. In part one, when we said, and this kind got to go, we said, well, if you don't spend time with God on the mountain, don't expect signs and miracles to follow you in the valley. We, we talked about how Jesus was on the mountain praying, and when he came down in Mark chapter 9, the father said, Jesus, I brought my son to you and asked your disciples to rebuke this spirit that is tormenting my son, but they could not do it. When Later on, when Jesus rebuked the demon, they asked Jesus, why couldn't we do it? He said, because this kind can only go out through prayer. Somebody needs to understand this morning that some things in our lives will not go until we spend quality time with God in prayer. When we pray to God, God understands, God hears our prayers, and this kind will have to go. That there's power in prayer. You can call a major concert and this place will be packed. But you call a prayer meeting, only a few people show up. And that's the strategy of the enemy. 
That's the strategy of the enemy. As long as I can keep them from praying, they will not understand the power that they have. And this morning, I've come by to remind somebody that when we pray, the atmosphere shifts in our favor. Amen, <laughs> somebody. When we pray, there's a shifting in the atmosphere. I, I don't know this morning who's going through what you're going through, but you're not in church by mistake because God wants you to understand that your season of things shifting in the atmosphere has come. Your, your season of you turning things around has come your way. I don't know who am I talking to this morning, but God has sent me by your way to remind you my brother, to remind you my sister, that if you take the time to pray, if you take the time to call on the name of the Lord, if you take the time to get on your knees and cry, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I have. If thou withdraw thyself from me, where should I go? If you take the time to call Things will start to shift in your favor. Listen, I, I preached from this text before, but the Lord showed me something different in it today. Verses 1 through 4 talks about the atmosphere. The Bible said it was about this time. Somebody said this time. It, it was about this time that Herod had James, the brother of John, killed. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he had Peter arrested. He had Peter put in prison he, Peter, finds himself on death row. Because if James got killed, Peter knew that he was next in line. It meant somebody? Peter knew that he was next in line to be killed. The Bible said it was about this time. Things will happen this time in your life. But I like what the Bible says there in verse number five. Hallelujah, somebody. In verse number five, the Bible says, and Peter was in prison. Peter was arrested. Peter is in prison. Let me, let me stop there and remind somebody this morning about three things about prayer. One is that prayer, get this, Prayer will stop or prevent you from going through a situation. Am I right about it? Amen. Prayer will stop if you pray. Sometimes, anybody ever been driving in a car and you realize you call the name Jesus and you realize that if Jesus had not been there, right there on time, you would have been in that bag. Accident, but somewhere, somehow, he slowed the car down. Somewhere, somehow, he made the other person to turn the other way. I come out to tell you, sometimes prayer will stop you from going through some things. Other times, prayer will be with you. Hallelujah, somebody. Prayer will be with you as you go through what you're going through. That's why even as you go through, you are not so depressed because prayer is with you. Goodness and mercy, they're with you even as you go through what you're going through. God will allow you to go through some things to remind you that God is still with you. And not only will prayer 
be with you as you go through some things. Get this, somebody. But prayer will also bring you out of that wish you're going through. Do I have a witness in the house this morning? Has prayer brought anybody out of a terrible situation? Has prayer brought anybody out of a difficult situation? Is there a testimony this morning that your grace and mercy brought me through? I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you. Your grace and your mercy brought me through. Get this prayer will bring you to so Peter is in prison. Bible says the church, but the church. Somebody said, but. <laughs> ah, Bishop, that's what I love about this text. Peter, who Jesus said, you are Peter, you are the rock. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. Peter is in prison. And the church understands the atmosphere. The church knows that dreams have been killed. And Peter is next in line to be killed. And the Bible says the church earnestly. They're not in fear. They're praying. Because they understand that there is power in prayer. They, they understand that when you seek God. Listen what he said. If my people who are called by my name. If they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And turn from the wicked ways. He said then I will hear from heaven. I forgive their sin and I will heal the land. The church decided to pray. Is there a praying church still? If God looks down at us. Will God be pleased with our prayer? When God looks at us as a church, will God want to see that we praise but don't pray? We like a good sermon but we don't pray. We do this and we do that but we don't pray. Something happens when God's people decide enough is enough. Something happens when God's people stand up and say, Understand the power that is in us. Yeah. So the church started to pray to shift the atmosphere. Somebody said shift to shift the atmosphere. Ah, oh, God is looking for people. Who understands what it means to shift the atmosphere. The church is praying. While they're praying, the atmosphere starts to shift. The church is praying. And while they're praying, the atmosphere starts to shift. Starts to shift in the prison. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. The atmosphere starts to shift. I'm telling somebody right now, there is no destiny when it comes to prayer. No matter where you are, you can pray that God will shift the atmosphere. And listen, this is the first thing happened. The Bible says suddenly, suddenly an angel appeared and said, Peter, quick, get up. Peter, get up. And the Bible says that when Peter got up, the chains fell off his wrist. I just want somebody to know this morning, somebody to know this morning that when you pray, when prayer shifts the atmosphere, your position is changed. Amen, somebody? God changes your position. God does that. And chains are broken. The Bible says, the angel told Peter, quick, get up. What the angel is telling Peter, you don't belong there. The atmosphere has changed. Things have changed. Quick, get up. God is telling somebody this morning that the atmosphere, atmosphere in your life is about to change because you belong up 
and not below. He said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. I'll put you above and not beneath. I don't know where the devil, I don't know where the enemy has placed you today, but I declare in the name of Jesus that if you start to pray, that God will shift the atmosphere, you will realize that God has anointed you to be more than you are today. Is there anybody who's ready for a change in your position? Say yes, somebody. You don't belong there. That's, that's not where you belong. You, you don't belong. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't belong there. Look at somebody else and say, you don't belong over there. That God is about to shift the atmosphere. Whatever the devil has placed on your race, the chains that he has, that's pulling you down. In the name of Jesus, those chains are about to be broken. Freedom is coming your way. You're about to walk in the peace of God. Say yes, yeah, somebody. He said, get up. He said, get up. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, get up. He been, he been pulling you down for so long. It's time for you to get up. Get up and follow your dreams. Get up and open that business. Get up and write that book. Get up and give leadership to that ministry. Get up and do what God has called you to do. Pastor, how can I get up? You can get up because God has not given you a spirit of fear, but out of power, love, and a sound mind. You can get up because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. I said you can get up up because God is with you and if God be for you who can be against you you can get up and be everything that God has ordained you to be say yes somebody Tell your neighbor, I'm getting up. My position is about to be changed. Tell somebody, my position is about to be changed. But listen to this. And I'm almost done. Listen to this. I'm almost done. The angel said, uh, get up. And then uh, he said, uh, in this new atmosphere, when you get up, you got to change your clothes. You got to change, put on news, put your sandals on. Because where I'm about to take you, you can look like where you've been. Okay. Okay. I just said something to somebody. Where I'm about to take you, you can look like where I brought you from. And that's the second thing. Because when prayer shifts the atmosphere, Get this, you will not look like what you've been through. Is that a witness this morning? You will not look like what you've been through. I know, I know, I know. I know you've been through a lot. I, I, I know the enemy has been messing with you. I know some nights you cry. I know sometimes you ask, God, why me? Why has to be my family? Why has to be my son? Why has to be my daughter? God, I know sometimes you think that it's all over and you want to take your life. I know. I know sometimes you wonder why I'm in all this debt. I max one credit card. I max the second credit card. When I go to have dinner, I'm afraid to take the third credit card out. 
Because I don't know if the balance can carry the meal. I know, I know that. But get this, I just want to let somebody know that what God is about to take you through your prayers, when they see you, they won't believe you the same person. Because you will not look like what you've been through. You will not look like the oppressed and depressed person you've been through. You, you won't look like the person who tried to take his or her life. You won't look like the person who tried to cry. God is saying, once I bring you through, once you stand up, people will understand that I have anointed your head with oil. People will understand that my grace is a you once you step into that boardroom and you take your seat in the boardroom, nobody will look at you and say, Look at her, she still look like what she's been through. Because when you walk, you will walk in authority. I said, When you walk, you will walk in anointing. When you walk, you will walk in the grace of God on your life. Now, look like what? You know, Bishop, when I thought about this, supervisor, I thought of my own life. I thought of my life when they said to me, nothing good will come out of my generation. Thought of my life when uh, growing up in a war torn country, having no food to eat, being subjected to gunfire. And I thought about this, I thought about my life, wondering if I would have a future one day. And that's when God reminded me that I know the plans that I have for you. <laughs> plans to bless you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I declare as I stand before you this morning, I don't look like somebody who's been through a civil war. I don't look like somebody <laughs> who had no food to eat. I don't look at somebody who was subjected to gunfire every day because God's grace, because God's favor has been with me because God reminded me that I'll be with you always. As I stand before you, you will never know until I share with you my testimony, what God has done for me. I want to tell somebody this morning, get ready, get ready to share your testimony. Get ready to let somebody know I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful show, seeking to rise no more, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And love lifted me. Get, get ready. Get ready. Because you will not look like what you've been through. Look at your neighbor and say, I see you in the future. And you look better than you look today. Turn to somebody else and tell them, I see you tomorrow. I see you in the future. And you look blessed. You look out of favor. Somebody say, I receive it. I receive it. You, if somebody is prophesying over your life this morning, you ought to say, I receive it. I receive the favor. I receive the grace in the name of Jesus. 
I receive it. And then in verse 11, I'm done. In verse 11, after Peter got up, after the chains fell off his wrist, after he went through iron gates, Verse 11, Peter said, now I know. <laughs> Somebody said, now I know. Peter said, now I know without a doubt that God has sent his angels. God has sent his angels. To deliver me from the crutches of Hera. Now I know. And I just want to say, get ready to testify that there is power in the name of Jesus. When we pray, the kind of prayer that shifts the atmosphere, we, we understand that we pray in the name that is above every name. Listen what the Bible says about that name. The Bible says that the at the mention of his name. Anybody knows that name in church this morning? The Bible says that I had to mention of his name that every knee shall bow, that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. He says, saying his word, he said, ask my father anything in my name and it will be done. You know, you know, you know, some people like name dropping. It's like they feel the importance. Oh, yeah, I know Bishop Jackson. I know Reverend Carl Moore. I, I know this person. People love to drop names. But this morning, I got a name that I want to drop. <laughs> But you, but I got a name this morning that I want to drop the name of Jesus. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. I got a name this morning that I want to drop. That name is Jesus. There's power in that name. There's healing in that name. There's deliverance in. That name. I got a name. His name is Jesus. Anybody knows that name? Anybody? Listen. The Bible says Peter and John, they're on the way. To the temple. The lean man looked at them trying to borrow something or ask them for something. <laughs> and Peter said, Look at us. He said, Silver and gold, we do not have. But such as we have, we give to you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. I want to tell somebody this morning. I want to prophesy over somebody this morning. That in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rise against you. God will condemn. In the name of Jesus. I break down every stronghold. I remove every hindrance. I, re I refuse every obstacle in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in the name of 
of Jesus receive your breakthrough in the name of Jesus be delivered say yes somebody all right I'm done I'm done because uh, somebody don't believe that there's power in that name. And so you said, preacher, that's a good word. But just the way I came in, that's the way I'm going to leave. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You will not leave this place like the way you came. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. There's shifting in the atmosphere. Somebody needs to stand up and say, Jesus, do it for me. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to get up on your feet and say, today, the atmosphere in my home is being shifted. Today, the atmosphere on my job is being shifted. Today, the atmosphere in my life is being shifted. Is there anybody this morning? You stand in a place of receiving. You stand in a place of expectancy. Say yes, somebody. Come on, if you can, stand to your feet. If you can, stand to your feet. It's a shift in the atmosphere that will change your position. Break the chains. Look, 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 they told you, you will be nobody. You will amount to nothing. That's all lies from the devil. The Bible said when he speaks, he speaks his original language. He, he lies. He's the father of lies. The lie of the devil. You can't get ready to walk in that ballroom. Get ready for your promotion. Amen. Get ready, get ready, get ready Amen. for your next level. Yeah, yeah. Go, go, go and buy yourself the new suit that you know you need. When you are appointed a supervisor, go, go, go ahead. Buy yourself the new, cut your hair, fix yourself up, and get ready. Because God is about to do something supernatural in your life. Come on, somebody, put your hands together and give God some praise in this house this morning. preach this sermon to myself because as I was preparing this sermon I told God God don't let it just be for the people who are hearing it let it be for me let it be for me because I know what you've done you're the same God yesterday and today and forevermore I know what you do you, 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 you think you've gotten there no God got more for you. God got more for you. So when you leave this place today, tell yourself, I cried my last cry last night. When you leave this place today, tell yourself, I'm leaving you walking in power and authority. When you leave this place today, remind yourself that God has promised never to leave you, nor forsake you. Let me pray for you this morning. Let me pray for this congregation this morning. I just want to pray for somebody this morning. There's an anointing on my life. There's an anointing on my life. There's an anointing on my life. And I pray that anointing will fall on you this morning. God, I pray in the name of Jesus for my sister. I pray for my brother this morning. 
I pray God that you will start shifting the atmosphere in their lives. God, I come against the enemy. I come against the enemy. I, I rebuke. I bound the enemy. I destroy the weapons that have been formed against them in the name of Jesus. God, I pray. I pray you show up. I pray you show up. I show you show up and deliver them. God, I pray that you lift them up. Give them a testimony that you still able. I pray for homes that ain't disarrayed. I pray for homes where husbands want to leave. I pray for homes where wives want to leave. I pray for homes where children are misbehaving. I rebuke and bound every weapon, every power force of the enemy that have been assigned to destroy homes. I come against it in the name of Jesus. I speak peace in the atmosphere over homes. Come against marriages. Demons that have been assigned to attack marriages. I come against it in the name of Jesus. I pray for single people who feel lonely and depressed. I come against that spirit of depression in the name of Jesus. I destroy it. Now I say thank you, Jesus for hearing my prayer. Somebody put your hands together in Jesus' name. Now, now, let me say this, because we're about to go. But there's one more thing that we need to do. We want to make sure that everybody in this room and those who view in this service online, that every one of you knows Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. Now, if you do not know Jesus Christ, we, we want to offer Jesus Christ to you. We, we, we extend. He, he's waiting for you to just say, Jesus, yeah, I am. All you got to do is confess your sins. Amen, somebody? That's all you got to do. The Bible says there that, that if we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All you got to do is confess. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be safer with your heart. You believe and you are justified with your mouth. You confess and you are saved. If you're in the house this morning, just raise your hand. Is there somebody this morning? I pray for you this morning. I pray. I pray that God will bring you to church this morning, that you will receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I pray that if you're looking for a church home, this will be a church home. If you yet, just raise your hand. Is there somebody here this morning? I, I pray for you this morning. I pray for you. Don't be, don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. I pray for you this morning. Just, is there somebody else who just want to give your life to the Lord? Just, just raise your hand. Just, if you raise your hand, one of these preachers will go there and meet you where you are. Is there somebody this morning? Or maybe you just want to join the church. Is there somebody in the house who want to join the church this morning? We would love for you to be part of our fellowship. We would love for you to come and be part of our fellowship. Come on, somebody. Today is your day. Today is your day. Look at your neighbor and say, are you saved? Look at your neighbor. Ask them, ask them, ask them, ask them, ask them. Ask them. Are you saved? Help me, help me. Help the preacher up here. Help the preacher. Amen. Amen. Anybody, anybody wants to give? Join the church or give your life to the Lord? Anybody? 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 All right. God bless you. We are safe. No, no, no. The one more thing. I always pray for the people who view in the service online. Just repeat after me. Dear God, if you need salvation right now, dear God, I confess my sins. I ask you into my life. Forgive me. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray this prayer, you are saved. Please reach out to us, call us, and just email us. To email us. We would love to have you. Come on, somebody, put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord. You'll be seated for a minute. Bishop, you'd like to say something? You good? Amen. Uh, you are my strength.
Come on, let's stand and sing this song as we leave. Strength like no other preaches to me. Bro, Latrell, thank you for coming to church, sister. You sure, thank you for coming to church. Team Thomas, the Jackson family, thank you all so much. Strength, strength like no other. Strength like no other. Somebody said, reach us to me. Come and let's receive the benediction now. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his shalom even as the atmosphere shifts in your direction. Now and forevermore as you receive the peace of God, the shalom in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen and amen and amen.